VCW value creation wheel is a meta framework that allows organizations, individuals and governments to solve their challenges. Uh, it has been developed for the last 20 years in cooperation with uh, universities, scientists, uh, managers all around the world. The VCW helps you to bring on board people or stakeholders that will provide a completely different perspective about the problem that you are facing, such as, for example, how to find a job, how to overcome stress, how to rethink your professional career, and so on. So rather than yourself as an individual trying to come up with solutions or trying to come up with criteria to solve, to address those challenges, the VCW invites different stakeholders for example, members of your family or your friends to generate many more ideas that will help you to overcome your problem. In addition to that, the VCW also is a, a powerful tool in the sense that when we are trying to overcome our challenges, our problems, we tend to filter the criteria uh, using as a basis a very limited perspective. So we have a very limited number of filters that we use to select the best options. Our business model basically uh, is supported by two types of projects. We have projects that are financed, where we sign an NDA, non-disclosement agreement, and we cannot speak about them. And then we have other projects where we sign with organizations mutual agreements. So typically these organizations, they want to have a project developed for free, typically by students. And what they give in exchange is they give access to the data for research purpose, for teaching purpose, for coaching purpose, and so on. Our message is, is very simple. The VCW is a meta framework and we think at the macro level. However, to grow we need partners that think at the micro level, that have local knowledge, that know about the local market, know about the, the local industries, as experience in the fields and so on. So we, as the VCW, will never interfere with the the approach that our partner wants to follow. For example, if our partner says for Manila the right way to enter the market of um, uh, farming is through coaching to farmers or to trade associations, we're gonna say okay we are here to support you. So the, the VCW model is very much global from the VCW perspective, which is we have a global meta framework that can be used worldwide, but then we give the freedom to local partners to customize the framework to the local market. So depending on the specific needs of the local market, on the network they have and so on, we're going to develop together a joint model, a joint business model. I was giving the example of farming, but for example, we did in the past a project with a company in the field of uh, aerospace, exactly which, which had to do with the use of um, satellite data to improve the irrigation systems and so on. And when we developed the business model together with this company, initially we came up with a business model for Brazil. But the moment we moved to the US, to a specific um, county in the US, this business model has changed completely. However, the VCW is exactly the same. The framework is exactly the same. However, when we change to a specific market, a local market, we tend to adjust. That's why we say the vision of the VCW is a local vision, in the sense that we have a global framework that basically supported by theory across many different fields, is supported by hundreds of projects developing, developed during the last two decades, so this is the global part. And then we have the local dimension, which is, is the partner that will tell us how to implement in a specific context, in a specific market, in a specific industry, in a specific country, village, whatever. The VCW uh, started being developed around 95, 96. 
and the initial challenge of the VCW was how to help port wine exporters to grow. And at that time, uh, I looked to many different frameworks, established frameworks that all of us know, like for example, Ansoft Growth Matrix. And then I start realizing that when I was going to visit the companies, the companies typically were telling me that framework is very static or that framework does not incorporate our strategies. You know, we have, in addition to that, we have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, K, etc. So, and I start questioning myself, is it possible to exist a framework or to develop a framework that could help us to overcome growth challenges? So, I'm speaking about 20 years ago. Then after that, I continued developing the framework and then I moved during my PhD to Portuguese exporters. I worked on this for more than four years. Then after trying to apply the VCW to Portuguese exporters, I asked myself, okay, can we apply the VCW to Portuguese and British exporters? And the, the framework kept improving, improving. And then in 2007, there was a major breakthrough. Why? Because I had the opportunity to, to move to MIT, to the engineering school. And all my education in the past was in, in business schools. So I was at Warwick Business School, then I moved to Sloan School of Management, then I was at Stanford Graduate School of Management. And uh, all these schools had a business, let's say, vision, business orientation. So when I moved to the engineering school, the framework where I was working for many years uh, was really tested. And then I had questions like, okay, this is a great framework, but can you really use it to find, for example, lost airplanes in Pacific Ocean? Can you use it for technology transfer in biotech? Can you use it, for example, to reduce the costs in the labs? Can you use this framework to help our students to find what is the right job for them? And then I understood, after 10 years, more than 10 years doing research on this, I, I understood that the, the initial version of the framework was very limited, in the sense that it was very much business-oriented. So at that time, I thought, okay, I need to, to come up with a framework that is in the box structure, is outside the box in the sense that it has the capability of bringing many different perspectives from nanotechnology, biotechnology, engineering, and so on. And that at the same time, no box, which is if somebody from architecture comes to me or from design or from history or for, from music and tells me, but I know this to, for example, generate ideas, can I incorporate into the framework? And I, nowadays the framework achieves that. If I go back in time to 2007, the framework was still very, very inflexible. Today, no, we can say I'm, I'm happy with the framework, which because is simultaneously agile and structured. So the VCW nowadays is being taught in many countries across the globe, in more than 20 countries. For example, we are now offering the VCW in the US. We are offering in the different European countries, such as Germany, Austria, Portugal, Cyprus, and so on. And we are also offering the VCW in different Asian countries, and we are just starting right now uh, more partnerships. The vision of the VCW is the VCW Hub is the VCW Hub will always be focused on developing new products, new services for our partners around the world. We'll be focused on generating digital content and on organizing different events across the globe that can help us to support our partners. Then, together with the partners for local markets, for specific customers, we're going to develop uh, unique customized business models that can be a win-win situation for uh, both of us. So, if you'd like to become a partner of the VCW, 
please join the VCW Hub and you might find more information at valuecreationwheel.com and you might see examples of different projects that we conducted around the world at openvcw.com. The VCW Value Creation Wheel uh, framework has been published in the Journal of Business Research. In this publication, we explain what is the Diana framework, which is the theoretical, the, theory, the theoretical framework supporting the VCW, all the theory, and we explain what is the Tiago framework, which is basically all the practical examples that can fit the framework. The VCW, what it does is, it brings on board the different stakeholders that interact with the organization. When I say the different stakeholders, it might be internal or external stakeholders. So we are speaking about, for example, the suppliers, the distributors, the government, environmental associations, and so on. So if we use these stakeholders to generate solutions, how to overcome a particular challenge. The, in the initial stage, they don't need to be necessarily good or bad. They are just solutions. The same about the filters. If a manager has to take a decision, if he thinks by his own end, typically he's going to put two, three, four, five filters. If we bring on board all the stakeholders to explain to the manager what might be an interesting filter, it is obvious that the final decision will be much more powerful because the manager had the opportunity to consider many more different angles. So what the VCW does is in the initial stage diverges in terms of the number of solutions and ideas to overcome a particular problem and there, there are no good or bad ideas or solutions. Everything is acceptable on the initial, on phase two the same applies to the filters, which is we try to understand from many different angles what are the pros and cons of picking a particular solution. And again, there is no good or bad filter. That's why we say it's very important to listen to the devil's advocate. It's very important to listen to the laggers, to the late adopters, to the non adopters of, of a particular product and so on. The moment we have a significant amount of solutions and filters, then we can feed the key decision makers with this um, amount of data. In the presence of this amount of data, then the key decision makers might say, okay, out of these, let's say, 100 solutions, there are 20 solutions that are worthwhile to export. Out of these significant amount of filters, we have here, let's say, 10 filters that are interesting or that we should definitely consider. And then the key decision makers establish a ranking. Let's say fil the filter most important, for example, is to be needs to be aligned with legislation. Filter number two, for example, is we need to uh, implement this within the next three months. Filter number three, for example, it needs to be aligned with our team, with the capabilities of our team. Filter number four needs to be approved by the board of the multinational and so on. So once we have all these filters, we can make a funnel. We start with, let's say, 20 solutions, filter number one, align with, with the legislation, now we only have 10, filter number two, then we go down, 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 until we arrive to the final solution. Once we have the final solution or final solutions, we move to the prototype stage, so we are already on phase 4B and where we're going to design, how we're going to implement this solution. Then we move to the implementation stage where the, the key decision makers again play a critical role, namely in terms of definition of the business model and of the three M's, which is manpower, minute and money. On stage five, it's also very important to look to the different KPIs, key performance indicators, so it's important to evaluate them because at the beginning of the project, on phase one, we establish the, what are the necessary KPIs to achieve within a project and of course at the end of the project we need to, to see to what extent they were or not achieved. We have partnerships 
at the consultancy level. For example, we work with uh, Average, with, uh, which is owned by Entity Data, and in this particular case, Average helps us to implement an innovation ecosystem inside the Portuguese Mint. So we are speaking about a company with 650 employees, where we were able to put the 650 people contributing with ideas to solve a particular challenge within the organization, which was how to increase value while cutting costs. So we are speaking about a paradox. In terms of coaching, we are now working with a major multinational, a Japanese multinational, that is now based in Portugal and Spain, and we are helping them to create a VCW ecosystem for Iberia. So the CO is exactly the same for the two countries, and now together with VCW, we're going to provide coaching to different levels of the organization, and we're going to help them to come up with a governance model. In terms of teaching, the VCW is being taught at different schools across the globe, schools such as MIT, Babson College, this in the US, is being taught in different European schools such as Nord Academy, CREMS, Vienna University, uh, Cyprus International Institute of Management, uh, AX and Provence, uh, Nova School of Business and Economics, uh, Gdansk Business School, among others. In Asia, the VCW has also been offered in different Asian schools, such as Korea University Cubes, Korea University Business School. Now we are developing new partnerships across the globe. Now, just in this conference in China, we had the opportunity to establish new links for Dubai, for Spain, and for uh, France. So the VCW has been doing partnerships in terms of research. For example, just very recently we initiated a partnership with the creator of the lag user method, Professor Sarah Jan Mir. And what we are going to do is the VCW has its own methodology, its own tools, and Together with the, with the Professor Sarah Jan Mir, what we're going to do is we're going to bring the tools that Professor Sarah Jan Mir developed for the lag user method and incorporate them into the VCW. So this way, one plus one will be equal to 15. If we, if I look to this particular project, the lag user method is uh, nowadays a well-established methodology that received media coverage, namely from the Wall Street Journal and uh, it, it builds on the following premises, which is if you are a laggard, if you are a late adopter, if you are a skeptical, at the end of the day, if you are the devil's advocate, you can build a lot of added value for idea generation as well for the s determination of the filters of the criteria that might tell us which ones might be the good or let's say less good ideas in the future. So, by doing a partnership together with Lag User Method, we make the, the VCW much stronger. So this is the way we have been growing uh, across the globe, is typically through partnerships across four areas, which is teaching, research, consulting and coaching. So, if you think about the VCW, at the end of the day, the VCW presents a, a global mindset and we bring the partners in these areas, it might be in one or two or three or the four areas, we bring the partners for together with us to develop a, a global product that might succeed worldwide. Managers typically, when taking a decision, they face the paradox of choice, which means, or they have too many options. For example, if they are trying to enter a new international market, they have close to 200 countries across the globe and many small cities across the globe or villages. And when facing these uh, huge amount of options, they simply frozen, 
because they don't know where to start. Or they have precisely the opposite, which is they have just one or two options to, in, uh, to solve their, their own problem. VCW, first of all, is a meta framework, so we are not superior or inferior to other tools. We have the capability to incorporate existing tools, existing frameworks, theories, and so on, in order to solve different challenges across uh, society, across organizations, and uh, also at the individual level. Something that is very unique of the VCW is that we separate the solutions from the filters. So in order to solve a particular problem, we generate hundreds of solutions, we generate hundreds of filters, and we don't mix them. Typically what happens with many, uh, with many tools is that they put everything into the same bag. In our case, no. Although we might gather the data sometimes at the same time, typically we have these, we are concerned in separating the solutions from the filters. And then we bring both solutions and filters to the key decision makers so they can take an informed decision. So they have much more data in terms of overcoming a particular challenge and in terms of analyzing which ones are the pros and the cons. Another difference with other tools is that many tools, they are user-led or consumer-led. Of course, we also care about the consumers. The consumer is a critical stakeholder, but we consider all the stakeholders that interact with a particular organization. For example, the employees, the shareholders, environmental groups, the government, and so on.